Sony's most popular Dolby Atmos surround system just got a redesign. The HTA9 now has a replacement, but will you like what you see? There's only one way to find out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you missed my last video, here's a little recap. Between a press trip to Tokyo late last year and another more recent trip to the Sony Pictures lot in Culver City, California, I've had a chance to get updated on what Sony is doing with its home entertainment audio systems. Like the TV lineup, the audio lineup has a new naming convention. But I know what you really want to know is about what happened to the HTA9. So let's start there. The HTA9 made some pretty big waves as one of the most clever and innovative little Dolby Atmos surround systems. And folks have been eager to see what Sony might do with it. Well, here it is, introducing the new Sony Bravia Theater Quad. Now, if you're anything like me, once you get past the name, you're deciding how you feel about the new shape of the speakers. Quite a departure from the unusually tall cylindrical speakers that came with the HTA9, aren't they? Those admittedly tall cylindrical speakers were also a little polarizing. They were well made and had attractive appointments, but they were fairly big, which maybe seems like a strange observation considering there are plenty of bookshelf speakers out there that are larger in both volume and footprint. But when you're playing in the home theater in a box space, I think folks go in expecting something less invasive, while also still demanding the kind of excellent sound that usually requires larger speakers. The Bravia Theater Quad attempts to address that. These square speakers have a remarkably thin profile and they can be wall mounted, which makes them a much more stealthy solution than the A9 speakers, which when wall mounted, would definitely protrude from the wall in an awkward way. Now you can stand mount the new quad speakers, which might be necessary, especially in the surround position, if walls are too far away or non-existent. And when stand mounted, well, I think they have an interesting look. I think I could get used to it, but what do you think? As before with the HTA9, the Bravia Theater quad system comes with a small processing box that takes the signal from your TV or other source device, processes it, and sends out the wireless audio signal to each of the four speakers, all of which are self-powered and need to be plugged into an electrical source. If you want a subwoofer, the same two subs Sony has offered for quite some time now, the SW3 and the larger, more powerful SW5, are available as a separate purchase. Now, I did not get to audition the quad system without a subwoofer, so I can't speak to how the newly designed speakers perform in the bass department, but it's my hope that they didn't take a huge step back from the HTA9. I don't think they did. And I think they're gonna offer a big full sound even without a subwoofer, even if they can't dig in and provide any like seat shaking rumble. Like the HTA9, the quad system can use a Sony TV as a center channel speaker, but since it's outfitted with Sony's impressive 360 spatial sound mapping technology, creating a convincing phantom center channel should be no problem. I did get a chance to hear the system, albeit a short audition. In fact, we didn't get to shoot it a whole lot, so our apologies for not having a ton of video B-roll or pictures, but in that short time, I was really impressed. I don't think the quad takes any steps back. If anything, its Atmos surround effects and fidelity seem as good in some ways and even better in others. But I'm gonna reserve final judgment until we can get one in for review. Now, I don't have pricing and availability info for this just yet, uh, although when I do, I'll pin it as a comment down below, so you'll need to stay tuned for that. Okay, I also want to tell you about three more products Sony will be offering this year. But before I do, I want to touch on a new technology that will be made available in both soundbars and the new quad, as well as some of the TVs I covered in my previous video. Sony calls it Voice Zoom 3. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the dialogue clarity or dialogue enhancement feature that's found in many soundbars and even TVs. Most of them alter the EQ a bit to push the frequencies that the voice tends to occupy, which can result in more intelligible dialogue, but it often sounds a bit 
out of place. Others may try to take a more precise section of the frequency spectrum and boost it, but it's usually a fairly blunt instrument. Sony's Voice Zoom 3 is much more surgical. It uses AI to analyze the audio signal and lift the voices from the rest of the sound, then boost only the voices. In a demonstration that I got in Tokyo, they played a soccer match, football to many of you outside the US, and showed us how Voice Zoom 3 could lift the voices out from the roar of the crowd so you could hear everything that the announcer said with crystal clarity, but nothing sounded artificially boosted. Most dialogue clarity systems would have made the crowd also sound kind of honky, and the fidelity of the sound would have been tossed out the window. Guys, it was eerie how well Voice Zoom 3 worked. And it can be implemented at different levels as well. So if you need a little help, you set it at level one. If you need a bigger boost, perhaps for those who are hard of hearing, crank it up to level three. Honestly, I think Voice Zoom 3 might be one of the best things that Sony's audio engineers have done because I think it's gonna be a huge benefit to a lot of folks. Also, while in Tokyo, I heard a jaw-dropping demo of Sony's latest 360 spatial sound mapping technology. Now, I'm not sure that this latest iteration has been deployed into the new Bravia Theater Quad or any of the other products I'm about to show you. They didn't make a big deal about that at the press trip in California, but I know that it exists and I'm hopeful that if this new audio lineup is not yet armed with that new processing, it can be updated with it in the near future. The rest of the lineup includes the new Bravia Theater Bar 8 and the Bravia Theater Bar 9, as well as the very interesting personal listening device that Sony calls the Bravia Theater U. Now, as for the U, I like the idea, which is to give someone a personal surround sound experience that sounds massive, but won't bother anyone else in the home. But I don't know, I kind of feel like headphones do that pretty well. I was admittedly kind of cool on the U, but have a look yourself and let me know what you think of the idea in the comments. And do you want me to review it? I also got demos of the new Bar 8 and Bar 9. And I don't wanna hurt anyone's feelings here, but I did not get a very good sense of how those systems performed from those demonstrations. They were a little quick and they seemed unnecessarily loud, although that could have been because I felt pretty sick at the time. Like for sure, they were very powerful bars, but I didn't get to hear just the sound bars. Both demos had surround speakers and a Sony sub connected, so I do look forward to checking them out in a more modular way in the near future. But on the whole, I gotta commend Sony for trying to tie its whole home entertainment lineup together in a more cohesive and simple way. I think Sony is gonna have some super compelling demo setups in retail stores, and it's never been a more attractive proposition going all Sony for your living room. To be sure though, I am gonna have a blast evaluating all of Sony's gear this year. Between its aggressive new TVs and its new audio systems, Sony aims to bring the cinema experience home for everyone, not just those with dedicated rooms and deep pockets. And you gotta love that. Thanks so much for watching everyone. What do you think? Leave me those comments down below. I can't wait to see what you have to say about the quad, especially. Drop us a like while you're down there. Subscribe if you haven't already and liked what you see. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.